Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over multiple inheritance. So multiple inheritance allows a child class to inherit from multiple parent classes. And in the previous video, we went over multi-level inheritance, which is a similar concept. So with multi-level inheritance, the hierarchy grows vertically. So here you can see, we can have a child class C inherit from a parent class B, and the parent class B can inherit from parent class A. So this hierarchy is growing vertically. And with multiple inheritance, you can have a child class inherit from multiple parents. So instead of A to B to C, you can have both A and B be inherited by C. So in this case, the hierarchy grows horizontally and you can combine the two. So you can have class C inherit from A and B and then you can have class D inherit from C. So this is going to make a Y shape and this is combining both multiple and multi-level inheritance. So throughout the series, we've been working with game characters. So we have warrior and mage and warrior inherits from game character and mage inherits from game character. What I can do is I can create another class. And for that class, instead of inheriting from game character, we can have that class inherit from both warrior and mage. So here I'm going to create a new class called magic warrior. And it's going to inherit from warrior and mage. So to specify multiple inheritance, you just add a comma to separate the classes. And here I'll just do pass. Now let's create an instance of magic warrior. All right, so we create a magic warrior object. Now the question is, if I print magic warrior dot weapon, what will we get? So here you can see in the constructor for warrior, we call super init with sword, which calls this game character constructor with the weapon sword passed in. And for the mage, we do the same except we pass in staff. So we did not define our own constructor in our magic warrior class. So it has to be either warrior or mage. So if I create a magic warrior object, which constructor will we use? So this would be a conflict. And if I save and run the program, let's see what happens. You can see we get an error. So on line 25, we call super init with sword. And that is for the warrior. Line 25 is over here. But then we get a type error. And for some reason, we are calling mage init. So here it looks like we're calling the warrior constructor. And then the warrior constructor is calling the mage constructor. And the issue actually has to do with the super function over here. So in the next video, I'm going to go over this particular issue with the super function and something called the diamond inheritance problem. But for now, I just want to focus on multiple inheritance. So I'm going to comment this out and do the same over here. And instead of calling the constructor for game character with the sword parameter, I'm just going to do super dot init. And here I'll manually set self.weapon to sword. And let's do the same for the mage. So super init and self.weapon is going to be a staff. Now if I save and run the program, you can see the weapon is a sword. And if I flip the order, so instead of warrior mage, we can do mage warrior. And if I save and run the program, you can see the weapon is a staff. So the magic warrior is going to call the constructor of the first parent class. And if the first parent class does not define its own constructor, so let me get rid of this, just comment it out. And I save and run the program. Will it call game character or warrior? So let's save and run the program. And you can see it calls the warrior constructor. So we get sword. So there is some ordering here and I'll talk more about it in the next video, but this is called the method resolution order which is from left to right, bottom to top in the class hierarchy. So it's going to check mage constructor first. If the mage does not define its own constructor, then it will move on to the next one and check to see if the warrior has a defined constructor. And in our case, we do have a defined constructor. But if warrior also didn't have a constructor defined, then it will move up a level and call the game character constructor. Okay, so let's uncomment this. And I'm going to switch it back. Okay, so currently our magic warrior has a sword. Now what happens if I call magic warrior dot attack? So let's save and run the program. And just as expected, we call the attack method of the warrior. So we slashed with the sword. So just like with the mage and warrior, we can override the constructor. So over here, I'm going to do 
init. And in the constructor for the magic warrior, I can call the parent class constructor. So I can do super dot init. And then I can define another attribute. So self dot weapon two, and I'll set it to staff. So a magic warrior that inherits from both warrior and mage will get sword and staff. So here, if I print out magic warrior dot weapon two, and I save and run the program, you can see we get sword and staff. Now, of course, if I do it this way, we are hoping that super is going to call the warrior's constructor, which it does because we are specifying warrior first in our inheritance list. But if I switch the order and I save and run the program, you can see now our magic warrior has two staffs. And that is because we call the mage constructor. Instead of doing it this way, maybe we want to explicitly call the constructor of warrior. And to do so, you would just specify the class name warrior dot underscore in it. And of course, since we are using the class name instead of super, we need to pass in self. So now if I save and run the program, you can see we get sword and staff. So even though we had mage first in the inheritance list, we are explicitly calling the warrior constructor. So if I flip them and I do warrior mage or mage warrior, there will be no difference. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get sword and staff again. And likewise, we can override the attack method. And we can make it so that the magic warrior will use the attack methods of both warrior and mage. So for that, I can just do warrior dot attack self and mage dot attack self. So if I save and run the program, you can see the magic warrior has a sword and staff. And when we call attack, we attack by slashing with the sword and using a fire spell. All right, so that's pretty much it for multiple inheritance. You can have a child class inherit from multiple parents. And when the class inherits from multiple parents, that class has access to all the methods of its parents. And if there is a conflict, whether it's in the constructor or a method, the child class in Python is going to use the method or constructor from the leftmost parent. And if it can't find it, it'll use it from the next available parent. And if there's no more parents, then it will check the level above. And of course, we can explicitly select which parent method to use by typing in the class name and then calling the method name. All right, so that's it for multiple inheritance. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, make sure you give this video a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more Python tutorials like this one, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.